and Carmen Clomperens and uh, and Luna with Carmen on mono black scan coffers list coffers and Luna on four color lamplight Phoenix. Here it looks like we've got uh, reasonable sevens from both players. Pretty uh, interactive from Luna now that we've got that uh, that fixed. Uh, got some removal, some counter spells, and part of the Lamplight Phoenix Altar of Dementia combo. Yeah, you know what I appreciate about the selection of decks this week, Jake, is so much of modern, you think about, like, you know... He, the game is decided, or at least the texture of the game is decided in the first couple turns. Unanswered Ragavan or, you know, Blinked Elementals or some kind of crazy combo, whatever it might be. But but tonight we're getting a lot of games where, like, there's really not a lot of action settling in for the long game. Try to pick your spot, you know, make your cards line up favorably against the opponents. Um, and uh, That's just good magic, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great we're seeing... A couple of a uh, couple of grind a uh, couple of grindier mid range decks uh, like like Carmen's. We're seeing Luna's is a combo deck can can win the game as early as turn three with Altar of Dementia on turn two into Lamplight Phoenix on turn three to to sort of run both players out of cards in library. Um, but really, Luna's deck is a little bit more on the controlling end, right? We see counter spells and leyline bindings and Teferi time ravelers and and trying to trying to find the right spot to win with a lamplight phoenix instead of necessarily making it plan A, so to speak. Let's talk about lamplight phoenix just as a fair and square creature in this matchup. I mean, pretty good against an all removal, uh, all edict kind of deck. Yep, and I think this is actually a spot where Carmen is pretty heavily incentivized to try and remove the Lamplight Phoenix right now, while Luna doesn't have that collect evidence for requirement met, right? If if the Lamplight Phoenix dies now, there aren't four CMC worth of spells in Luna's exile to or in Luna's graveyard, excuse me, to exile to the Lamplight Phoenix. So a removal spell in this instance would keep the Lamplight Phoenix dead, which I think is has to be something on Carmen's radar right here with a demolition field to enable revolt for that fatal push in hand. Yeah, definitely. So what's the um what's the incentive to go for a fatal push rather than Liliana Edict? Um Fatal Push is in general just not going to be a very good card against Luna's deck, right? There's once Luna's graveyard is, is full enough, killing the killing the Lamplight Phoenix isn't going to be all that exciting. Whereas Liliana of the Veil, vale, conversely, is a really powerful engine to strip Luna of cards. And and speaking of powerful engines, we're going to see a, a copy of the Wandering hit the battlefield for Luna. That's really going to let her power through some of Carmen's discard. It really is Carmen's plan A is just strip away all of Luna's resources and and the ring is going to make that pr uh, a pretty tall order. Yeah, likely we're going to see the one ring on both sides um, or not, I guess. Carmen is really going after this like kind of land destruction resource denial plan, which I like in general. I'm a little bit more skeptical of it against an active one ring. Um, but hey, I mean, when your opponent has 500 cards in hand, maybe one of the best things you could do is attack their mana, slow them down. Yeah, if, if if you can't cast any of the spells you have, then drawing cards might not be as powerful as it as it usually is. Interestingly enough, Luna, now with full domain through all of those demolition fields and field of ruins, has the opportunity to lay line buying to Liliana, but Reed, I'm not really sure I would care if I was Luna. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's only going to be threatening once she gets on into that six loyalty ballpark because cards in hand is definitely not the limiting factor for Luna in any way, shape, or form. I mean, like pretty soon she'd just be discarding the hand size anyway, so Liliana is not uh, putting that much pressure on. Yep. And, and here we've got... Carmen's got a choice to make between... Both of her her really marquee four drops in the One Ring and Shieldred first selecting to fire off another Field of Ruin and and that's it Luna's out of basics here and that's big game any more Field of Ruins or uh, 
or demolition fields that Carmen Carmen turns up are just gonna just gonna nuke a land of Lunas and and she's not gonna get anything back for it. Here we see a one ring with interestingly no ability to counterspell here from Luna. The uh the binding here relevantly going to prevent Carmen from drawing any cards when the ring is activated and removed with the trigger or with the activation on the stack that you're going to go ahead and draw however many cards for counters there already were on the ring. So ring didn't have any cards, got removed, no cards were drawn on Carmen's side. So that's a, that's a really good exchange for Luna, I think. Yeah, really good exchange for Luna, though I have to say those Leyline bindings are looking pretty taxed. I mean, you've got to have an answer for the Shouldred. When she comes down, Liliana is going to threaten ultimate pretty soon. So, you know, Luna is drawing a million cards. Looks okay, but there's a world where, like, if even one of these threats uh, slips through the cracks, it, it could be, it could be over. Yeah, it's one of the one of the real strengths of Carmen's deck is just raw card quality, right? We're seeing Liliana the Veil, one of the best cards in Modern for a long time. One Ring, the One Ring, one of the best cards in Modern right now. She Oldred, sort of the scourge of, or by a lot of people considered the scourge of smaller formats like Standard, and and just kind of throwing haymaker, haymaker after haymaker uh, from Carmen's side is, is a pretty good recipe for success. Gonna see a Thought Seize here. What do you what are you thinking if you're in Carmen's spot right now, Reed? I, I know that you've you've cast the Thought Seizer too in your time. Yeah, so are, are we in a spot where the Thought Seizer is resolving? Yeah, I guess Luna did not counterspell, which I really, really like that choice on her part. Um and yeah, Carmen can't be happy to see that hand with the counterspell kind of shields up. Um I guess this becomes all about Liliana ultimate. So Luna's going to get a draw step, four draws from the one ring, six more cards from the preordain to find an answer to Liliana. That's a lot of shots, but it's do or die. Like if that Liliana goes minus six, I think Carmen's very likely to win the game. Interesting. Enough... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, interestingly enough, Luna pretty short on life. Only, only six to work with. She's also pretty heavily incentivized to try and find a spot to re to deploy one of those other rings to uh, make sure that she's mitigating some of that life loss, reset those burden counters and this Liliana, not really giving her a great window to do that. Well, I'll add to what you said, Jake, and the Liliana minus six does target. So if Luna has a few turns in a row of, of protection from everything, it's actually a little bit of breathing room. So that's a few different incentives to just spending four mana on a one ring this turn. That's that's a really good point. I, I completely missed that. And and no, that's that's a that's a great that's a great incentive for that. But it looks like Luna found a prismatic ending here to be able to close that off. But Luna gonna be at two life. This she altered might manage to to stitch together the last couple points for Carmen. Yeah, I mean, it looks like looks like Carmen's going to win by just casting the Shouldred, and Luna will take four from the one ring, two from the draw step. You can't really activate the one ring with the Shouldred on the battlefield. So, you know, one way or another, it seems like Carmen stole this one in the face of overwhelming card advantage. Yeah, it looks like the best... The best Luna can hope for is something like Shieldred or Solitude Shieldred with the with the lethal Shieldred draw trigger on the stack into like activate ring find another Solitude to Solitude your own Solitude or something pretty outlandish like that. I guess Gone does serve some of that purpose. It it removes the Shieldred okay. to allow a one ring activation. All right, so you bounce Shouldred, you draw five, and then you know, something something goes right. <laughs> yep, looks like that was that was not it, and and Carmen managing to just let the ring do most of the work, which not usually where you want to be, but but really well executed um, by by Carmen to to manage to to close the door there. 
Yeah, I mean, Carmen, it's a good night if you're a Carmen fan. Like the 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 match that Carmen and I just played, and now that game won. It's like these are super close games. Carmen is playing well, giving herself every shot to take advantage and just kind of threading the needle and, and getting these wins in, in close toss-ups. Interesting. So as we go to sideboards here, Reed, what are what are you thinking? If you're Carmen here, right? You're you're up a game. You're one. You are one game away from locking up that top eight berth. What are you thinking as you go to your sideboard of how can I just close this next game out and and call it good? A lot of times when you're playing these uh, these mid range decks, and not that I have to lecture you, Jake, on this, but just um, <laughs> you know to talk it through, it's it's you think about like let me dismantle the most likely ways that things can go wrong. And then when the dust settles, let me make sure that my deck structurally has an advantage of what, against what the opponent's doing. So in the case of this match in particular, I'm thinking, let's not die to the combo, so the graveyard hate coming in, and let's not lose to an unanswered one ring. So that's where you see stuff like Orcish Bowmasters, Shouldred, maybe Necromentia, of course, the discard spells. Um, anything you'd add to that in terms of what Carmen should be thinking about? Um, one of the, I, I really like, uh, I would really like to see, and it looks like she likes not to, the copy of Pithing Needle out of the sideboard. It's not too bad to interact with from Luna's side, but I think having a card that does sort of double duty of shutting off Altar of Dementia to shut off the combo, or shutting off the one ring to, even though Carmen is also a one ring deck, I think that there's a lot of value in the ability to maybe just lock Luna under her own ring that she'll take a couple damage every turn, but not actually be able to use it. And Needle was has has been a has been a card that I've employed out of these sorts of mid range decks to fight the ring, but I've never necessarily, I guess, played with the ring in that in in the same strategy. So I'm I'm for sure going to default to Carmen. Maybe the the Needle's a little too narrow in this instance. Yeah, really good thought. So did you actually, did you catch whether or not Carmen brought that one in? It looked like she elected not to. Um, gotcha. And here, now that, now that we're in the game, Castle Locked Wayne tapped on turn one for Carmen. Maybe my least favorite turn one play in all of mm -hmm. Magic. But, but uh, uh, the triple, triple Field of Ruin, which did good work in game one, that can be an approach that Carmen goes for again. Yeah, I think I think that that this that this the this land destruction game plan for Carmen is very strong against Luna. We saw she drew a lot of cards with the with the one ring in game one and wasn't necessarily able to cast many of them just because of of getting repeatedly stone rained or strip mined, I guess. Here are we gonna see a uh, are we gonna see another just pay three mana for the most honest lamplight phoenix of all time? Or we also see the Altar of Dementia. So Luna's setting up the combo, but Carmen does have this Nile spell bomb to the sword to, to be able to fight through that. Yeah, the Phoenix is uh it's it's even a little stronger here than it was in game one because Luna has enough to bring it back uh if it was to die. Granted, the Nile spell bomb definitely puts a wrinkle in that, but I don't you know, I'm not against the approach of just playing these as fair and square creatures in the matchup. On the other yeah, hand, I do think Luna's, the One Ring is probably Luna's best card in the matchup. So just taking a turn to cycle Lorien Reveal, maybe fetch a tapped dual land, and then guarantee that you can cast the One Ring next turn, even through a discard spell, that, that, that's appealing as well. It looks like we're going to see Luna get the Altar of Dimension into play. This still does leave her the ability to, to fetch Shock off this Flooded Strand and then cycle the Lorien Revealed. I, I like this line a lot from Luna. Sort of working towards both game plans simultaneously, right? The, the Altar of Dimension never feels great, I think, to have to take the turn off to put into play. But I think this is about as good of a turn as, as Luna's going to be able to find. She's not really under any pressure. So getting the altar into play, I think, makes a lot of sense here so that it's just sitting there and being threatening, sort of forcing Carmen to, to, to keep an eye on that the whole time. You're right. Perfect. Perfect choice. Interesting. Did not cycle the Lorian. Oh, really? That is interesting. 
it looks like we're we're now in Luna's turn, and she doesn't have the fourth land to be able to get the one ring into play. She does. She did draw Prismatic Ending, which does let her clear that Nile Spellbomb out and and maybe work towards a pretty quick combo. I'm a little surprised to not see this Lorian cycled on end step. But... So actually, can Luna win here because the Demolition Field in theory nets her plus one mana this turn. So with four, you can go Prismatic Ending the Spell Bomb. Carmen will use it. Then you use your remaining three mana to to assemble the Phoenix plus so Alter combo. Oh, you don't you can't win with start if you start with no graveyard. I also think we were in the I also think Carmen fired off the demolition field in the draw step, and prismatic ending and lamp light phoenix both had to be cast at sorcery speed. Or right. oh no, I guess that no, I guess that doesn't no, I guess that doesn't matter. Maybe Luna had the fourth land the whole time and it was just out of frame. No, it was okay. So, so the um, uh, no, the demolition field got activated for, yeah. in the draw step, and yeah, used I, that I follow, mana yeah. For... You cite, yeah, you you use the mana to cycle Valorian in the draw step. Yep, I I missed that. Instead, just electing to go for uh to go for a one ring. Not a bad consolation prize. Oh, good good commentary in chat. The goal of not cycling the Lorian revealed. May have been to keep it as a way to uh, restock the graveyard for the Lamplight Phoenix's ability, you know, post uh, mm, post that's what, world. Yep. yep, that's it. That that makes sense. It's, these the this 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 Lamplight Phoenix deck is really interesting, and and like like Carmen talked about at at the very top of the broadcast, it being a sixty eight card deck, it's really kind of pushing the boundaries of what we know about the way to build Magic the Gathering decks, right? All all theory has always pointed to just play 60 cards, you want to draw your best cards, etc. But now we're we're seeing that maybe change. Yeah, I think the more complex the mana bases get in modern, with more, you know, singleton lands that you want access to in the course of a long game the more temptation there is to go above 60. I know, like, for for example, in my deck, I really want to draw Steam Vents and Fetch Lands, but I've had it come up a lot that I want access to these Surveil Lands, and uh, I even have a Triome for some green sideboard cards. So it's it's a weird dynamic where, like, yeah, it, what you said, the, the traditional knowledge breaks down, where it's not just I power rank my cards and want to draw the best ones it's like i actually want access to more different things in, in the course of, of long scrappy games i think it's really cool big draw from carmen in necromentia but luna does have veil of summer and i believe necromentia targets correct yep yeah veil of summer is a card we should talk about as this is naturally going to be one of the most impressive against the mono black deck I think that right, we're gonna see we're gonna see this field of ruin has successfully shut off uh or has successfully run Luna out of basics, which means any subsequent field of ruins are gonna be really, really powerful for restricting Luna's mana. And interesting, she's electing to just put a solitude into play, which does open the window for Carmen to fire off this necromancia if she wants. And instead, Carmen electing to go Liliana of the Veil. I, I, it's it's really interesting how different, like like both of these players know their decks way better than I do. It's it's cool to see lots of these decisions sort of circumventing some of. I, I wonder how much of this is just pilot expertise. They they both clearly know way better what they're doing than I do. It's really cool from my standpoint to kind of look at look at how to how to navigate these games. Yeah, I think that showed good judgment on Carmen's part because I think under some different circumstances, you would go for the Necromantia. However, Luna has enough going on on the battlefield with the active one ring and the 3-2 lifelink creature that if Carmen was to spend a full turn 
necromenching a card that was not part of that battlefield, it, it might, you know, Luna might just be able to win in a non-combo fashion by playing creatures and getting too far ahead on cards. Yep, and it looks like Luna is going for the combo. Yeah, so talk us through this, Jake. Do you, do you have a good concept of what's going on here? Yeah, so, so at least the way the execution of the combo works is Lamplight Phoenix gets sacrificed to Altar of Dementia. Luna's going to target herself so that she can mill three cards. And as long as, to start the loop, Luna has four CMC worth of cards in her graveyard, she can exile those when she sacks the Lamplight Phoenix to bring it back to play. And as long as she keeps milling four mana value worth of cards in the top three each iteration, or, or has, has enough CMC sandbagged over the course of the loop, she can just keep milling herself and building this really big graveyard that the ultimate end game you work towards is then you start you have enough weight you have enough cmc worth of cards in your graveyard to recur the lamplight phoenix without milling yourself and instead you just mill out your opponent by sack my lamplight phoenix mill you for three exile my leyline binding sack my lamplight phoenix mill you for three exile my solitude sack my lamplight phoenix exile my eagles of the north etc you you build up a big enough graveyard that you just mill them for three mill them for three mill them for three and eventually they run out okay so it's going to take 16 mills for an immediate kill here but also given the context of the game you got to figure like if you mill carmen for 39 cards she's just not going to have enough left to to to, to mount uh, an offense from here um yeah but this is cool to see in action, and I certainly would not be surprised if this was just an outright media win. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see Luna close it out. It looks like she's got a uh, Lorian, which recurs it, a One Ring, which recurs it, a Subtlety, which recurs. She's got lots of extra fodder for this Lamplight Phoenix. So I think that what we're gonna end up seeing is Luna finishes the job, mills herself all the way out, and then starts pointing and clicking at uh at carmen we'll have to see if i can get a count on cmc in her graveyard that can that can fire it it's looking like it's, it's interesting we're seeing uh there, there's that's a lot of cards in luna's graveyard and is she gonna is she gonna pull the trigger one more time to to just mill the last two, or are we gonna start going after Carmen now? You better be really sure about those last two cards. Yeah. If you, yeah, exactly. If you, if you mill yourself. Um, so let's spend a little more time talking about that really interesting decision point that you highlighted, whether to pull the trigger on Necromentia when Luna was tapped out or go for the Liliana. Um as we see how the game plays out, it, it, it ends with a combo finish. So it's easy to think, okay, what would have happened if Carmen had chosen to necromancia the Phoenixes and, and prevent the, the outright combo? Um, I'll kind of double down on, on saying that I would have made the same choice as Carmen to play to the board and not fall too far behind against the 3-2 lifelink solitude. Um, but definitely an interesting one and... And uh, you know, as as armchair quarterbacks here, we can we can debate it as much as we want. Yeah, I, I don't I don't necessarily know which is correct. I I think from Carmen's side, there is some value in thinking that like I don't know that she wins the long game there with the battlefield as set right, an active one ring and a solitude to help to help mitigate some of the life loss that ended up costing Luna the first game. I think that is, like you said, a really scary board that you want to try and get under control. But I think Carmen's got a lot of ways to interact in her hand, right? She's going to end up dying with two Shieldred's Edicts and a One Ring that, had she continued playing the game, probably would have gotten deployed. So so I think, and, and maybe I'm being too conservative in this spot or, or too scared. I think I might have fired off the Necromentia and just said... This battlefield sucks, but I think I'm just going to try and slog through it. She's already part of the way to the combo, and it's re this is going to be my only time, I think, to make sure that I don't get comboed, especially since, right, a few turns ago, we saw her uh, 
fire off that prismatic ending on the Nile spell bomb. If I'm Carmen, I'm thinking she probably has the other piece as well. Good point. Yeah, certainly a lot of context clues there that you, you have to parse. But I, I certainly think it's, I, I think it's a really close decision, and I, I certainly don't know. I, like you said, it's really easy for me to just get up on my soapbox and say you should have necromanced. You were going to die to the combo. It's, it's especially since a lot of these sorts of combo control decks uh, remove some combo pieces post board to try and move away from the combo a little bit. I think that it. I, I think that it's easy to easy for me to say just necromancer, so you don't die to the combo that that from where we're at, we get to see. I, I think that both lines are are pretty defensible and make sense, though. Interesting. Yeah, we're getting some some intel both from what people are typing in the chat and from uh you know some of our our, our behind the scenes people looking at the graveyards but it, I, we don't believe that the game is ending this turn in which case luna is in trouble because she has no library remaining that's not a good spot to be in my experience <laughs> um it yeah it looks like so to mill 9 so she would need six more iterations of it and she's only got five cmc worth of cards in her graveyard and yeah it looks like we're gonna see carmen take this match down two games to zero it wow so like Car carmen lived the magic online dream there where you just press f6 kind of like throw your hands up in the air and then eight minutes later, like you've won the match because the opponent just couldn't couldn't get over the finish line.